Today, at this track, we will have two ladies with us uh, that proudly demonstrate that data science should not be a male-dominated area. We will now have the pleasure to listen to the presentation of Alexandra Mandic, a big data software engineer at EBS Instruments, who claims to be in love with da big data technology and telecommunications. She will tell us more about the power of big data and data science in service of excellent customer experience on a case of preventive network maintenance in, in the telco industry. I would just invite the audience to pose their questions through the, our platform. And Alexander, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. So as you heard, uh, my name is uh, Alexandra Mandic, and I am a big data software engineer at EBS Instruments. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the EBS company, I would like to welcome you all to today's talk uh, named Power of Big Data and Data Science in Service of Excellent Customer Experience. For several years now, uh, EBS Big Data team has been very excited about data and all new technologies and approaches uh, that allow allow us to play with data and transform it into valuable insights. Uh, which is why today I would like to walk you through our uh, data journey through Telco Field, show you um, what we have accomplished so far, introduce you to some of our biggest challenges, uh, talk to you about our ups and downs on the road, and hopefully you will find this story useful and interesting. So, uh, just this. We are experiencing a little bit of, uh, can you, just a second, or, Okay, so now we can continue. Uh, so this is the plan for today. And I would like to um, start this talk uh, with a topic that is uh, familiar to all of us on a daily basis, and that topic is customer experience. Later on, as I already mentioned, I would like to walk you through um, our data journey through a uh, telco field um, and explain to you how we started this uh, journey with uh, our own big data platform, uh, EBIS Performance Insights, or IPI, and how we later on used it to move, to, to move on to some new modern concepts regarding uh, Wi-Fi monitoring and predictive maintenance. Uh, finally, I would like to conclude this talk with uh, uh, some results we have accomplished so far, uh, and uh, if there is time, we could discuss uh, our current destination in this uh, big data journey and the plans we have for the future. So, uh, if you can agree, uh, I would like to start with uh, a topic that, as I said, is familiar to all of us on a daily basis. We all intuitively know that our experience as customers is critical to our relationship uh, to a brand or a company. It is highly unlikely that you would want to do business with somebody uh, who treats you uh, badly. And uh, I would like to highlight a very interesting fact um, that I found while I was preparing uh, for this uh, talk, which is that according to a research uh, recently conduct conducted in the US, it is estimated that 13% of customers will share their negative experience with 15 or even more people. On the other hand, 72% of customers are estimated to share their positive experience with six or more people. So, uh, with this in mind, it is not surprising that um, customer experience is predicted to overtake product and price uh, as the key brand differentiator even by the end of the 2020. So from this we can uh, see that the customer experience does really have uh, a huge and critical impact on every company business, even uh, companies in the telco business. Uh, also, companies who understand the impact and the importance of customer experience always, uh, already show superior growth uh, in sales and revenue. 
Take Amazon, for example. Uh, today, you can say that Amazon may actually be the best customer experience organization worldwide. And according to a, research, a recent um, a survey that was conducted also in the US, uh, when they ask people which brand would they choose, uh, if it offered mobile services, uh, most of the people said, almost 90% of people actually said Amazon. So this highlights a huge problem for telco companies because um, it is uh, clear that customers would rather identify with their favorite apps than with the mobile op operators that enable those apps. So here we can ask the question, uh, where is the uh, where is the problem with the telco industries uh, and why is the telco industry so bad at uh, maintaining and focusing on uh, improving uh, on on improving good customer experience uh, the problem lies in their traditional and conservative approach so uh, until recently uh, Telco companies uh, basically use the voluntary customer information to analyze uh, to analyze customer experience, but with uh, uh, like as I, as I said. Uh, the change in the, minds, uh, the mindset is uh, what has to be done uh, in order to improve a customer experience and the reputation of the uh, telco industries. Uh, telco companies produce huge amounts of data. Uh, they handle uh, million, hundreds of millions of uh, user uh, call records, uh, then internet and transaction data, uh, location data, and th that is only to mention a few. And that data has the pot potential to clear their reputation, uh, reputation and improve their uh, customer experience. And that is actually how we started this uh, whole story and our big data journey, is that we recognized the value uh, in that data and called for big data and data science uh, to the rescue. So our big data uh, journey started with our first step several years ago, and that is uh, EBIS Performance Insights, uh, or shortly IPI. IPI is a very powerful big data tool that turns vast amounts of data into valuable insights. Uh, so. Uh, our goal while we were, we were creating the IPI, our goal was actually to create a solution uh, that uh, has the same ability to ingest but also to process the data. Uh, and we have encountered many challenges uh, on the road. Uh, first challenges appeared when we started talking about the data collections, uh, our, about data collection. Uh, our task, or our, uh, actually our goal, uh, was to create a unified solution that would cover almost every use case of collecting all sorts of data uh, via different protocols on um, even millions of devices of different types, such as modems, CMTSs, etc. And when we collected that data, then we had to had to answer the question of where to store it and what to do with it. So. When we started thinking about uh, storing the data, uh, Hadoop platform and big data components like uh, HBase, uh, Hive, Scoop, uh, Kudu, etc., offered a perfect solution because they allowed us to effectively store data and access it in a quickly manner for uh, further processing and analyzing. So. The last question we had to answer on this road is to what to do with the data. And we, we started small. Uh, we couldn't find a unified solution that will cover all of the use cases. Uh, in cases where we needed to conduct some simple statistical analysis and aggregation, MapReduce was the best option. In other cases, when, in, when we needed a deeper and more complex statistical analysis that had to be done near real time, uh, Spark was the best option there. And that was also okay for some time, uh, but then with the rise of technology, we, ha we had to rise too. <laughs> so uh, we had to add the component of predictive analytics and machine learning, which we will discuss uh, later. So 
this is our first step, a step from the IPI point of view. And I would just like to uh, shortly uh, talk to you about all the benefits and our accomplishments that IPI brought with this architecture we just uh, talked about. So IPI is designed to collect the performance data from network, um, from network devices such as modems or CMTSs if we talk uh, particularly about HFC network but other networks can also apply like MPLS or GPON. So IPI is designed to collect data from the, those devices in a quickly manner. Uh, also, what we wanted to, uh, to do here in order to process that data and gain the most valuable insights, we started combining the his, uh, historical data with real-time data. And also performance data from devices was combined with the uh, information about the network technology. All to gain the most valuable insights we could get about, um, about the network. Our goal here was um, uh, specifically to understand the network and help telco company raise their quality because that means raising the uh, customer service and that of course by raising the customer service you're also helping customer experience. So the biggest benefits uh, in this part are that basically so with this whole uh, processing of data with MapReduces and Spark and statistical analysis, we managed to offer um, an overall uh, status of the whole network, but also to focus on problematic segments of, uh, and of the network we are um, actually analyzing. So. Uh, this is great, you, you, you may be asking yourself, okay, this is great for performance management, but what does uh, customer experience has to do with it? Well, in cases where there are huge uh, problems in the network that uh, can affect a, a, a significant number of customers, what usually happens is that the customers call the call center and call center gets overswamped with uh, thousands of calls and they have to uh, answer and specifically analyze uh, every single uh, report that they get. With this, they have, uh, if the group problem was de de detected, they have a immediate answer about the problem and maybe even an estimate about how long the problem solving is going to take. And that uh, leads to improving customer service and later on customer experience. Uh, besides that, we uh, also hold or, or, or offer uh, specialized reports for every single device about their performance. So that can help uh, field technicians, call center employees to better do their, jo their job and um, by that uh, improving customer uh, service and then customer experience. Uh, maybe the most valuable benefit from this first step of our journey are specialized reports about the different segments of network and their quality uh, and service, uh, quality of their service based on the performance data we collected. Uh, this actually allows telco companies to act uh, proactively before the problem even happens. So they are basically fixing the possible problems that can happen to the customers without them knowing and uh, all they can see is improvement in their uh, quality of service. So this was our first step and it was great. Uh, we achieved some of the most amazing results with it. But as the technology um, was rising, so the, did the demands to our uh, system. And we had to do something to improve it and to get to the next level. Because uh, what was sometimes marked as revolutionary at some point became a necessity. And Telco companies were like, okay, that's cute, but what else? <laughs> so the next step was uh, logically um, to focus on the monitoring of the Wi-Fi network. And basically what we did here, we gathered um, and relied on the best practices we used for I IPI and optimized and improved mechanisms for storing and later processing the data. Uh, Wi-Fi today is basically like 
electricity. Uh, you only know it exists when it stops working and uh, then you start to panic, you, became, you become aggravated and that happens to all of us, we, we have all been there. But the truth is that um, Wi-Fi networks face issues with uh, uh, density, uh, connection, uh, coverage, etc. And th th those are all critical factors to bad customer experience. Wi-Fi networks are known to be dynamical complex systems uh, with uh, many co components that need co to coexist together in order to achieve high performance and reliability. So what we um, managed here, here is we started the story in a similar way like we did with IPI and the HFC network. And uh, we are started collecting the performance data uh, from um, Wi-Fi devices such as interferences, uh, jitter, uh, throughputs, um, number of uh, users on Wi-Fi devices, information about uh, channels, etc. And we uh, tried to get uh, as much data as we could about uh, the whole Wi-Fi network uh, externally. So uh, the first part of, uh, of, of this step was basically just um, maybe just to, to, to replicate some of the things from the IPI and the HFC uh, use case. Uh, and what we managed here is okay to get the overall state of the Wi-Fi network, to identify the segments of the Wi-Fi network that, were, that are um, interpreted and uh, identified as the um, most problematic with uh, most users and uh, basically with the largest, numbers, uh, largest number of uh, problems. Uh, but what we... Um, noticed from working on, on this part of the journey is that um, people in Wi-Fi, and that was our motivation for creating everything, is that uh, when people complain about Wi-Fi, they usually complain about two things. First thing is that if, for example, they live in a house and don't, they don't have uh, great coverage in some of the rooms or, or parts of the house or their apartment, they will call uh, the call center to, to actually claim uh, a, a report uh, and claim a problem. And what happens uh, here that with all that data that we um, gathered uh, for the employee in the call center, it, it is very easy uh, to differentiate what could be the cause of the problem. So instead of sending the field crew by looking at the data, instead of sending the field crew with some spectrum analyzer uh, who would like go through uh, through the apartment and measure some things from the data they're seeing on their screen they can differentiate the cause of the problem and uh, offer an immediate solution uh, the other uh, reason people people are uh, usually complaining about uh, Wi-Fi uh, networks uh, is that uh, their connection usually drops from time to time and they don't know the reason of it. And that uh, usually happens uh, in buildings uh, due to interference because uh, in Serbia, for example, uh, it is very common that one provider holds one building and what happens is with uh, a lot of uh, users and uh, let's say at, at the prime time um, they're due to interference it happens that the provider interferes himself and the uh, customers are uh, experiencing low quality service so with the data we gathered uh, we can offer based on machine learning concepts, uh, we can offer a, uh, let's say, a distribution of users across channels uh, that will guarantee the best quality of service for every user, while the channel change uh, would not be a something that you, a user would have to go through. It would be something that would be done in the time that it is less expected of him to use the um, service. And uh, basically that was our uh, second part of the journey. Our second step, um, our 
final and uh, most challenging step uh, is the uh, one that is uh, our current destination now, and it is, it is the one regarding the predictive maintain maintenance. Uh, this step has been based on advanced analytics and machine learning algorithms. Um, the Goal, our goal uh, of this uh, uh, step is to understand the customer problems and trying to predict uh, customer behavior. So, when we started doing, um, uh, when we started actually uh, learning about uh, customer problems, our first approach was uh, pretty traditional. Um, we only looked at the performance data and uh, with the use of machine learning concepts, neural networks, uh, XGBoost, uh, random forest, we tried to uh, predict the behavior of the device and based of, on the performance parameters, trying to predict uh, a possible time for a complaint or let's say due to a failure. Uh, so, while working on this, we realized that there are some situations uh, that are out of, the, uh, out of our control, uh, which means there are some external uh, factors that can uh, have a major impact on performance parameters and that can lead us to uh, wrongful decisions and false uh, conclusions. For example, temperatures can um, let's say uh, temperatures, uh, temperature for that day can have an, uh, an, an impact on the device. Performance parameters would seem uh, unstable and not normal, but the uh, quality of service was, uh, was uh, completely okay. So uh, we needed to move to the next level and change something and improve our first approach. So on, when we moved on to the next level, we basically combined the historical performance data with the historical uh, data of, uh, with claims, and um, we put that in a, in a machine learning uh, model that was supposed to teach the system uh, to learn which possible combinations of bad performance KPIs can be interpreted as bad customer experience and can lead to a customer complaint. Uh, and we had some amazing ro results uh, so far. Um, our uh, last approach is something that is an idea for the future. Um, and it actually, it is just basically uh, skipping to the, moving on to the next level from the second one uh, by using the data, performance data and uh, data f um, about claims. We would also like to um, input the data we, get, we gather from surveys uh, of, cust of customer filling in surveys. So in, uh, in order to uh, tr uh, in order to try to predict or evaluate a customer opinion about the quality of service and about the telco company. So basically, as I said, we had some of amazing results with uh, our last uh, third step. And um, this, uh, this slide here is the for bragging so that you, you cannot say, okay, it's just a cute story, but what have you done so far? Uh, so what we actually managed is to uh, predict the critical de degradation of performance parameters uh, two hours before the actual degradation happened in more than 95% of the cases. Uh, and also what we managed, uh, the same results, uh, actually similar results happened with the time span of 24 hours, except it was more than 70% of cases. Uh, is this the end of the road? No. We would like to improve uh, these results and, as I already said, to move on to the next level. What we also managed to, uh, to do with the IPI and the understanding the network is to reduce the number of customer complaints by 10% and also reduce the number of repeated customer complaints by 40%. In that way, we uh, managed to improve not only uh, customer service, but also customer experience in general. Uh, I would like to finish uh, this talk uh, uh, with uh, these uh, facts, and I hope you enjoyed the story. So if there are any questions, I'm ready to answer. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we didn't receive any questions through the platform. Oh, sorry. It hasn't updated yet. <laughs> um, so uh, how big are the data that you are working with? Well, it all, a lot, it all depends on the use case since uh, we are working with uh, several telco companies. But I can say that we go up to 40 to 50 terabytes uh, of data. So. Uh, does your solution have some kind of root cause analysis? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, that was uh, the part I was uh, when I was talking about uh, the detection of uh, group problems uh, and focusing on uh, certain segments of the network um, that can have, um, let's say, a critical impact on a certain number of customers. That detection happens near uh, near real time and lets the telco company uh, in a very prompt way to answer quickly to solve the problem that can have a significant impact on a lot of customers. How do you prevent or detect and solve customers' problem, uh, b problems before it happens? What kind of problems can you detect? Well, uh, as I said, we, we first started to uh, look at just the performance data. Uh, and uh, after that, we actually saw that there are a lot of downsides to that approach. So later on, we combined our historical data about the data claims for the particular device and the performance data for, for the particular device. Um, after that, all that data was combined and put into uh, machine learning concepts. Uh, I would not like to go into the depths of this. If you, were, if you are interested to hear more, you can talk to some of our colleagues, specialists, data scientists uh, at our booth. Uh, but. Um, what happens then is we are trying to create a model that it is going to predict which combination of bad uh, performance parameters can be interpreted uh, as bad customer experience based on the chronological data. And the last question, what action or actions uh, do you perform after results and conclusions? Uh, what actions do we uh, perform after the results? Well, uh, we do uh, testing on our specific uh, use cases to confirm, and we also care a lot about our customer feedback. So it, it wouldn't be okay if we talked about customer experience and we didn't ask uh, our clients about their fe uh, feedback and evaluation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask for another round of uh, big applause for Alexandra? Thank you.